Hey guys, this is Christopher with another Onshape tutorial. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use patterns. So before we use a pattern, we need to create a 3D object that we can make the pattern out of. And before we do that, we need to make a sketch. So I will position the sketch in the top plane, and I will be making a cube up here. Now it's defined, and I'm going to extrude it an inch, and now we have a one by one by one cube up in this corner. So the basis of a pattern is that um, we can take one object and make it a whole bunch of times um, spaced evenly, so we don't have to do them all individually. So first the linear pattern. Um, we need to select what we want to pattern, and then the direction. Um, you could choose an axis like this, or you could choose a plane, and it will do normal to that plane. Um, and now it's asking us the distance between each of the different objects that will appear in the pattern. Um, because they're one inch cubes, I'm going to make it two inches so that there's an inch between each cube and now we need to say how many cubes we want in this pattern. So we could do 10 and it will automatically make 10. We could even do 100 or 1000 and it will do that. And we don't have to make each one individually. Um, I'll go back to 10 and we can change what direction we want the pattern to go. Um, we could actually make it go both directions uh, and we could make this side do three inches in between and then do four on the other side. Oops. Oh, we need to define that direction. Oh, I guess we could um, make it go a different direction there. Now we have uh, two inch spacing this way and three inch spacing that way. And this direction has four, so there's four columns and there's ten this direction and there's ten rows here. So um, that would be how to do a linear pattern. And you can see it's a lot easier to do this than if you open a sketch and drew 40 cubes or 40 squares and extruded all of them. It makes doing lots of shapes that are very similar very easy. So next we're going to do a circular pattern which will is similar to the revolve except rather than extruding it'll just position lots of parts in a circle and I'll edit the first sketch because in order to do this we need an axis and I'll just add one right here and it can be a construction line because we won't be extruding it Oops. There. okay um, now we need to use the circular pattern. We want to select our cube and the axis. Um, it's not showing up. Oh, it's because um, once we extruded this sketch, now we can't use any of those entities anymore. Um, so I'm going to delete this and make a new sketch um, in this same plane and an add an axis. Okay, now we can use this axis, um, except that our sketch appears after the pattern. So we actually have to create the, the, the um, sketch with the axis before we do the pattern. Um, and rather than deleting it and then remaking the pattern, we can actually just click and drag the sketch. Um, too far, there. Um, now it thinks that we created it before we created the pattern. And we can open up the pattern again and now select our new axis um, and now it's revolving around that we can choose um, how much of the pattern we want 
um, how far we want to revolve. Now we're only going 180 degrees, and we can say we want 10 times in that 180 degrees. Uh, now I've got a lot of intersecting shapes, but we could change this back to 360. Um, and now we've got a full circle with 10. and change that to anything we want. And now we have seven equally spaced cubes around that axis right there. And of course, like always, we could just go back in here and change these to smaller cubes and do it automatically update um, to, to this different shape that we created. Um, so the last pattern I'm going to show um, will be the path pattern or the curve pattern. Um, so it will follow, it will create a bunch of cubes or whatever you have here and they will follow a path. So I'm going to create another sketch here and with a spline I'm just going to make something like this and now we can create our curve pattern want to pattern the cube and this is the path we wanted to go around. Um, right now there are only two so it's kind of hard to see what it's doing but if we increase the number of instances um, that's also hard to see. Um, I'm going to change the path a little bit so you can see what's going on. There, we can see it a little better now. Um, if I show this, you can see that it's following that path. And I'm going to go back to our original sketch and center this so that now it's touching the original path. There we go. Uh, now you can see a little better that it is following. So you can see this corner is touching the path at that origin, and now all of these other corners are also touching it. Um, and it follows the path all the way up and we can change this number to make more or less of them and we can always just go back to this and change it if we don't want any conflicting boxes And that is the curve pattern. Um, now, besides just random squiggly lines, we could actually also do the same thing with a helix. Um, so I'm going to show that. In order to create a helix, we need to have a cylinder to wrap around. And I'm going to make this taller, and then we can create our helix. I'm not going to change any of the pitch. And now we have this path right here. I'm going to hide this second extrude. Um, actually, no, I'm going to just delete it completely. Um, so we can use the delete part operation. Um, the reason why we can't just delete the part is because if we did, um, then there would be nothing to create the helix around. So we actually have to delete the part after we create the helix, and that's why it shows up in the part tree like this. Um, if you just deleted it, then it wouldn't know what to do with the helix. So if you follow the operations that it does here, it actually deletes the part after it creates the helix. Um, um, I must have deleted both parts. Oh, I see. Um, we actually need to change this extrude right here to make a new part rather than adding it. And make sure we delete the right part now. Uh, what was happening before was when I extruded that, these were the same part. The cylinder and the cube were the same part. And I had to change it so that they were different parts so I could just delete one of them. So now we have our 
helix and the cube and we're ready to do another curve pattern. So select our cube and the path is the helix and right now we just have two but we could change this and now we have them spiraling up you can see the spiral pattern spiraling up that helix um, we can change it to more if we like um, now they're intersecting a little bit uh, we can also keep the orientation so now they are all uh, parallel and perpendicular to these original planes uh, now they're rotating about it um, but as you can see it's following the helix all the way up um, and also if you look in the part tree now we have eight parts um, because each time it does this it creates a new part so I hope you learned a lot from this video and if you did, please like and subscribe.